Good morning everyone, I'm here in Filimbest City and today we're going to be taking a look at their e-jeeps. Now these e-jeeps have actually been on the road for, well, some of them are new, some of them are older, but some of them are as old as six or seven years. So for all those people that have been saying we really need to actually do like pilot runs, we need to try these electric jeepneys on the road, these have been on the road for a long, long time. So I thought it'd be an interesting video to make because that's one of the biggest concerns of people. Can electric jeepneys really work here in the Philippines? Now there's something interesting about these actually. They're using lead acid batteries. I mean, we're gonna look closer, but they're using lead acid batteries. And you might be thinking, well, doesn't that take a long time to charge? Well, yes, it does. So what they've done is they actually take the batteries out. So you can see all the batteries over there. They've got a lot of batteries. Look at all of these batteries here. So literally what they can do is they can pull the vehicle into the depot here, remove the batteries from the side, put them on charge, put a fresh set in and just keep going around. Um, so it's very, very efficient. And of course, one of the most important things is that they actually maintain these batteries. Um, so you can see here, they've got caps on top, so you can actually like adjust the fluids as required and everything like that. Um, so yeah, for those that were worried about how long it takes to charge, you can see that they've already found a solution to that. So you can see they already have the orange plates from LTO. And if you look inside, you can see the minimum fare is 11 pesos. So this is inside Phil and Vest. So of course, the price is different to what you might see on the streets. I know that the LTFRB are really trying to keep the price down uh, for the PUV modernization program, but these have been on the road for a long, long time. Um, so inside, you can see it's basically like any other Jeep, except that it has an electric motor instead of a diesel engine. Um, in fact, they've even got like a little TV in here, which is quite good. And um, we've got rails on the top. So it really looks and feels just like any other Jeep, but it's electric. So that means it's practically silent when it goes along the road and it's not putting out any toxic smoke that you have to breathe in. Because it's electric, of course, it's very energy efficient and good for the environment. Now, if you take a look at the side of the vehicle, you can see these have really been on the road for a long time. You can see there's a little bit of rust and scratches and dents and stuff like that. And actually, originally they said like, why don't you show our newer ones on camera? And I thought, well, that's good, but let's actually show the ones that have been on the road for many, many years, because that's what people want to see. They want to know that these can really last a long time. Uh, some of these actually came from Makati. They were previously used as e-jeeps around Makati, and now they're here. So you're talking about six or seven years old. So for those that are worried, can electric jeepneys work in the Philippines? Yes, they can, because they are already. So there's a lot of smart people behind me talking about the PUV modernization program. And I decided to step away for a minute because I wanted to talk about something before I forget, basically. Um, one of the things that's unique about this Phil Invest e-jeepney program is they are the only operator because this is private land, Phil Invest City. Now, what's the benefit of that? You might be thinking, well, competition is good because that offers the best value for consumers. But the thing you have to remember is that the fare is set by the LTFRB anyway. So actually it doesn't matter if there's one operator or five operators. In fact, by being the only operator in this area, it allows them to be more efficient because they can have specific stops. Um, I think at the moment they have around 20 stops. So they don't just keep stopping everywhere along the road, which causes traffic. They can stop just at specific places. The other thing is they can schedule their jeepneys to be more efficient. So instead of having like 20 of them going along with just one passenger or two passengers each, they can schedule them. So during peak hours, it's every five minutes and off peak hours, it's every 10 minutes, for example. So that means that they have less jeeps on the road, but the ones that are on the road have more people inside so it's these kind of things that the PV modernization program is trying to replicate I mean this is basically a private enterprise yes it's been approved and you know they have to go through everything with LTFRB but essentially this is an early test of the PV modernization program because this has been going for a long time um, so I think that really is a big benefit that they can you know they can really control the area they can say for example okay it's peak hours there's a lot of people let's put all our Jeeps on the road and then during off peak okay let's just just slow it down a bit we don't need as many jeeps um, so yeah I better go back to the group but I just wanted to add that so let's take a ride on one of the jeeps you can see that this one does have the new side opening instead of the back opening so let's go on and see how it is So we just finished our ride now and you can see the Jeep is going back out on the road. Um, there wasn't too much footage because they're, you know, it's just a jeepney ride, but it was nice and smooth, it's nice and quiet and you don't have all the pollution and smoke from a regular jeepney, so it was a good ride. 